quick illustration real quick. Stand right here facing the crowd, right in the middle, yeah. And then I want to get, Leonard, come on up here, Len, please. I'm sorry that I put this guy on you. Stand right, stand right here in the middle, but facing that way. A little bit more, uh, yeah, right there. Okay, uh, Robert, come on up, brother. Stand right behind Leo. Anthony, come on up, man. You're right there. So come on. Where's Miguel? Come here, Miguel. Stand right here. Facing facing this way. Stand or more and more that way. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Miguel face. Just stand right here on the side. Facing that way. A little bit more out. Okay. Now put your hands out. See that Leo represents Pastor Ezra. Leo represents greatness, the greatness that is happening here in this church. He must depend on these guys, but his dependence is on God. Raise your hands. Straighten the air. See, there's no covering up top. You're not you, just, just him. <laughs> Amen. His dependence is on God, but he's got to depend on this guy. So trust has to be built over here, this guy. But we have him covered right here, all right? We have him covered right here like this. Now go ahead and put your hands down. Great things are happening in this church. I don't know if you guys know it, if you guys know it or not. But it, what is happening here is not happening everywhere. But sometimes when you're close to the fire, you don't know how cold it is out there. Because you're always next to the heat. So you have to know that there is something special that is happening in this church. Are you with me? So Leo is representing greatness, the greatness of God. Pastor Ezra, amen, is representing the greatness of God. It's through his life. He's been serving God for since 95. Through his life, he ran the UTC. He was international. Through his life, he came to West Covina, and he's here. Greatness is happening here. But to take greatness further than it is right now, to get this church to double, triple, it's going to take this guy right here, it's going to take this guy right here, and it's going to take this guy right here, and this one right here, Mr. Miguel. Now, these spots are interchangeable, and there's four spots that are open 24 hours all the time. The other day, I was looking for a spot to go to to get some medical stuff, and everything was closed, and I found CVS open 24-7. I want you to know that these are not exclusive spots. These areas are open to all of you, but you need to get to your spot if we're going to take greatness further now how many understand that how many understand that all right remember my my style of speaking and teaching and preaching is practical amen so in order for us to get him further it's going to take everybody getting to their area whatever that area may be it might be i'm going to i'm going to go over those areas with you well, put your hands out again. This is called horizontal leadership. Horizontal. And what it is is that the Bible says that we're going to expand to the left and to the right, right? Right? We know vertical leadership. Yes, pastor. Okay, I'll do it. We know that. But he can't do it all on his own. We need vertical leadership to get him further, to get this church further, so that it will grow. Yes, we're packed out in this church. Yes, the parking lot is packed out. Amen. But we're going to go further one day. And all of you are going to be able to get you this place where I'm going to be talking about tonight. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. You guys could go down. Thank you very much. And I'll call you back. You can bring the pulpit up now. Praise the Lord. I hope you got that a little bit. 
Amen. Remember, when trust is broken, you got to trust the guy in front of you. You got to trust the guy. In, I got to trust Robert. Robert got to trust me. I got to trust Leonard. He's got to trust me. I got to trust Anthony. Amen. But when trust is broken, because trust is given, but when trust is broken, then what happens? You got to get, you got to earn trust back. So how do you earn trust back? By saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, and don't do it again. That's all. Very simple. You ain't got to go walk a, a, you know, a bunch of people across the street and do all kinds of, r jump through hula coops. Just say, hey, man, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. And move forward. Amen. Hello, somebody. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. You see, furtherance means to help forward. When, 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 we, hit, when we surround Pastor Ezra with good people, and there's good people in here, we're going to go somewhere. People say, how did he do it? He's a good man. Well, he was surrounded by good people. Amen. I'm going to read an account to you before I start uh, speaking. And, and 2 Samuel chapter 19. Thank you very much, worship team. I'm sorry. I didn't mean you guys to be up here. Did we were supposed to sing a song or what? I'll do the earth, wind, and fire. Sing a song. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope I embarrass nobody. But 2 Samuel chapter 19. And I talked about this character before, but we're going to talk about him tonight. 2 Samuel chapter 19. It's good to have you all here today. I want to thank Pastor Ezra for letting me speak today. Amen. Great things. God is doing great things in his life. Um, I want to thank my wife. You know, I love her very much. Yeah. Next week I'll be married 20. I'll, I'll be married 21 years next week. Amen. 21 years. I know you guys didn't know, but I, I, I didn't get married until I was 41, 40 years old. Hello. How many want to wait that long? I wanted to get married the day I came to church. But it didn't happen. Amen. God made me wait. So I mean, I've been married 20, 21 years to a, a girl that loves God. She serves God, man. She serves God. She, do, she runs circles around me. Yeah. So I'm going to read to you in 2 Samuel chapter 19. Verse 31 through 39. Remember, my style of preaching, preaching is inspiration, teaching is information. My, my style is, is practical. Amen? And so I'm, I want to bring out a practical point, a couple of practical points to you. Practical means you can apply it right away to your life. Okay? Are you hearing me? Okay, this is the account of David returning from Jerusalem to Jerusalem from exile. What does that exile mean? Not being in the place where you want to be. How many are not in the place where you want to be? You want more finances? You want more blessings? You want to be in the other place? This is an account of David returning to Jerusalem from exile. Let's read in verse 31. Does everybody have it? 2 Samuel 19, 31. And it says, and Barzillai the Gileadite came down and went across the Jordan with the king, greatness, or King David, to escort him across the Jordan. Now, Barzillai was a very aged man, 80 years old, and he had provided the king with supplies while he stayed at Mananaim, for he was a rich man. Let me continue. And the king said to Barzillai, come across with me, and I will provide for you while you are with me in Jerusalem. But Barzillai said to the king, how long have I to live that I should go with you, with the king to Jerusalem? I am today 80 years old. Can I discern between good and bad? Can, I, can your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? And can I hear any longer the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should your servant be a further burden to my lord the king. Your servant will go a little way, way across the Jordan with the king, and, and should the king repay me with such a reward. Please let your servant turn back again that I may die in my own city near the grave of my father and mother. But here is your servant Chinham. Let him cross over with my lord the king and do for him what he seems to you. 
And the king answered, Shimem shall cross over with me, and I will do for him what seems good to you. Now whatever you request of me, I will do for you. Then all the people went over to the Jordan, and when the king had crossed over, the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned to his own place. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful night. We thank you for everyone here, and we ask your blessing on your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is an account of David returning to Jerusalem from exile, from the wilderness. David here in scripture represents greatness, like I had where Leo was standing. Pastor Ezra is standing in greatness. He is standing in greatness. What is happening here is not happening everywhere. I don't know if you know it. Jerusalem represents the place of greatness or the place where greatness abides. In other words, this is our Jerusalem, West Covina. The reason why David was in exile in the wilderness is because greatness had been stolen. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 6, says that Absalom stole the hearts of the people of Israel. That was his son, David's son. Greatness was ripped off. Greatness can be stolen. The Bible says in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal. The devil wants to steal what we got going here. Are you with me? He wants to take this, steal it. He wants to take it away from us. You see, most thieves, they leave evidence that they've been there. Something is missing. A window is broken. A door is kicked in. Things are moving out around. The house is ransacked. The devil, a lot of times, is not so obvious. He's more of a sophisticated type of thief. He will go in and steal something, and you won't even know that he was there. Hello. Because everything stays the same. What he does is he leaves a replica of what he stole. It looks the same, it feels the same, it smells the same, but it's not. It's a fake. It's a fugazi, a knockoff. It's counterfeit. Such is the case in the Salvation Army, whose founder was William Booth, who was the evangelist and established the Salvation Army in 58 countries. And he was winning souls for the kingdom of God. But today the Salvation Army is known for secondhand clothes and for secondhand furniture. Their greatness was stolen, even though William Booth was a great man. Now you see, where there is greatness, there are great men. Most men live outside in. Look what I got. This is my house. This is my car. This is my girl. This is my money. They live outside in. But great men live inside out. Hello, are you following me tonight? Amen. Great men love God. You see, where there is greatness, there are great men. How do we know if there's greatness in somebody? Well, first of all, they love God. The Bible says to love God with all your heart, your mind, your body, your soul. In other words, they, they read their Bible, they pray every day, they go to church, hello somebody, they give their money, hello somebody, they're involved in, in different things in the church. They love God first. Secondly, they love the ministry. Ministry is people. True greatness is not in what we amass to ourselves, trying to build our own kingdoms, but in the service we render to others. It's not in the, uh, about the individuality, but who we are as a team. Hello, somebody. Whoops. Sorry. I got two left hands and a right foot. <laughs> Our ministry is not just a good ministry. Hello, somebody. Because being good promotes averageness. God hasn't called us to be average. He's not called us to blend in but to stick out. Excellence. Our ministry is not the best ministry because that promotes arrogance and comparison. There are a lot of other ministries doing great things also 
We are not an exclusive ministry, but we're an inclusive ministry. We are a great ministry. We hate, we're huge. We're great at what we do. There are other great ministries, though, but we are one of them. How do we know if there's greatness in somebody? Not only does he love God and love a ministry, but he loves the man of God, the pastor, Pastor Ezra. Are you with me? Now, when the man of God is being loved and he senses the love, not by word, but by deed, greatness comes out of him. And when greatness comes out of the man of God, it changes the atmosphere. It brings forth intimacy. And when there is intimacy, it brings forth conception. And when there is conception, there's a birthing of greatness. In other words, others become great. How many want to be great one day and do great things for God? How do you know if there's greatness in here? You say, how do you know? Well, because I felt it. Were you here for the all-night prayer meeting the other night? Can you sense the greatness of God being poured out upon this church? I said, what is that? Greatness exists here in West Covina right here on Francisquito. And where greatness exists, there are great people. Here, his name is Barzillai. His name means iron man or iron hearted, meaning he was a real deal, a solid man. The Bible describes him as a very aged man and a very rich man, meaning he was very mature and very experienced and that he was very wealthy. He was great on the inside as well as great on the outside. Now remember, where greatness exists, great people exist. So there are four spots to get to to further the church. Four spots. Let's go over the first one. The first spot to get to is the provision spot. The providers. The Bible says in verse 32 of, of right there in 2 Samuel, it says that Barzillai provided for the king's supplies. He provided. If we're going to get this church to another level, there has to be provisionary supplies. Are you hearing me? The Bible says in Philippians 4.19 that God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. That word supply means epe corrego, means an overwhelming contribution. Not only does God want to bless this church, but God wants to bless you. So God wants to bless you so you could be a blessing. Bless to bless. You're not to hoard your, your blessings. You're to give so that God could give you more. Are you with me? Yes. Philippians 4.19. God bless you so you can be a blessing. That's why God has you here. That's why you're here. Tell somebody, tap somebody, that's why you're here. Provision, say provision. provision. Provider. Provider. This church, I don't know if you know, man, broke records in giving last year. Amen. Broke records. Amen. Amen. What, what you see here is what people wish for. When I was a pastor, I didn't even come nowhere near what's happening here. It's happening because God is in it. Greatness must be provided for. The second spot to get to are the protectors. Say protectors. The Bible says in verse 31 that Barzillai came to escort or protect the king across the Jordan. How do we protect greatness? Well, first of all, Proverbs 4.23 says to guard your heart because out of it, Come the issues of life. Stop tripping, majoring on the minors. Amen. If somebody didn't look at you and shake your hand, so what? Amen. You need God you need to get a hold. That's all. Amen. Don't trip off them. Don't make, don't make a big thing out of something small. Are you hearing me? Proverbs 4.23. This is Robert right here. This is, he's a protector. Amen. By protecting your heart. 
Secondly, by protecting your salvation. The Bible says to work out your salvation in Philippians 2, 12, to work it out with fear and trembling. In other words, man, watch out. People are watching you. They're looking at you. Amen. They don't need to see you smoking, drinking, listening to worldly music, talking about somebody being a chimosa in the, in the church. You know what I mean? Why? Because people are watching you. Right? So you got to guard yourself. Walk, walk with fear and trembling. Walk with fear and trembling, man. I, I, I got to watch what I do because somebody might be watching me. So I got to protect my salvation. When I protect my salvation, I'm protecting the church. Are you hearing me? The third thing we need to do to protect is we need to protect our, our brothers and sisters. How do we do that? First Corinthians chapter 8, they were having a fight about meat. Back then, people came from idolatry. It was big back then in the Bible days. So they used to sacrifice meat and, and to, to, the, to the idol. And that meat that was left, there was people in the church eating it. And other people that came from that background got offended about it. You know what Paul said? He goes, meat don't make you better. Don't make, it doesn't matter what you eat. But if my brother is offended, I'm not going to eat meat no more. Right there, Paul became a vegetarian. He stopped eating meat because people were getting offended. So we got to protect our brothers. Say protect our brothers. The third thing we need to get to is presenter. A be a presenter. What is a presenter? The first one was a was a, was provision. The second one was protecting, and the third one is presenter, a, a discipler. This presenter spot. Those who present people to greatness. Verse thirty seven says that Barzillai presented his son Chimham to David. David told Barzillai, "Come with me to Jerusalem." Greatness said, "Come with me." Barzillai explained to David why he couldn't go. You see, he said, I can't go. You see, not everybody's going to go. Not everybody's going to go to be a missionary, to go plant a church. He, but he said, I got someone who can. And he presented his son, Chimham, to David. What he was saying was that what he actually was telling David is that what is in me is in him. It's the job of the presenter to get the greatness that is inside of himself and put it inside of one being presented. Are you working with somebody? You see, to disciple someone, it's hard sometimes. How many admit it? It's very hard. You know, sometimes we, we look for that perfect one. Oh, he's the perfect one. Does he pray? Okay, he prays, he gives. He's here on time. Okay, I want him. So does everybody else. But sometimes we work with somebody for months and sometimes years, and, when, and then they take off and we get hurt. So we stop presenting people to, to, to greatness. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10 through 17, Paul said, Demas has forsaken me. He was working with Demas. And the Bible says he loved this present world, and he left while Paul was in prison. It hurts. We had some girls leave the church, uh, the, men, the women's home recently. Man, it broke my heart. I was crying, weeping. I love them. The Bible says in verse 14 that in 2 Timothy 4 that Alexander the coppersmith did him much harm. Even the businesses in the area were coming against Paul. And then he said, in verse 16, he said, everybody left. All forsook me. But he said in verse 17, but the Lord stood with me. When you're working with people, sometimes you're going to stand alone. You ain't going to have a team to work with the people. You're going to be by yourself at many times. As a presenter, you will fa face battles, rejection. But we don't reject back. We get hurt, but we don't hurt back. David at Zigzag, his own men wanted to stone him. They wanted to kill him. But David, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 36, it says, 30 verse 6, it says, David was in great distress, but he strengthened himself in the Lord. 
The Bible says, not by power, not by my, but by my, your spirit, says the Lord. Many, time, uh, many years ago, I watched a movie, a black and white movie. It was called, it was called The Old Man and, 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 and the Sea. I don't know if you've ever seen it. But there was an old black and white movie about a man that used to fish when he was young. And he used to go out there and catch big fish. And then something happened, and he didn't fish for many years, like 20, 30 years. And he used to dream about going out there back to fish again. And finally, he got a boat and went out there to the sea to go fishing for a marlin. And when he got out there, after a couple of hours, about three, four, five hours, he caught a fish. And it was a big one, and he held on to that fish. But all of a sudden, his, 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 his uh, 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 pole broke. So he, he used his hands to hold the fishing wire. And he stood there for about a day and a half holding on to that fish until the fish gave up. His hands were all bloody. His hands were all broken, cut up. But he stayed and held on to that fish. He tied that fish to the side of the boat and he paddled in. But on his way to paddle in, a shark came and ate the fish. But it, the thing about it is, is that we're going to get our hands bloody sometimes when we're working with people. But God will heal our wounds. A healed wound leaves a scar. What a scar is is the evidence of a healed wound. Look what Jesus did. I working with people. They hated on me. They talked about me in the church. They, 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 they cursed me and did everything they could to try to stop me. But I'm still here. My hands are still bleeding. I'm going to continue to work with them over and over. You see, presenters also, you know what I mean? It wasn't about only the catch for the old man, but it was about the struggle and the fright that brought him significance. It was the ability to go back out there and get back in there and feel that again. Some of us, man, we want to work with people, and we expect people to be perfect. They're not going to be perfect. You're going to get your hands bloody. They're going to, me and my wife, one time, they ripped our house off, stole everything we had. I, I had just got an inheritance, a bunch of money. I bought all kinds of stuff. Amen. And then boom. You know what I mean? So when we went to church and somebody else went to the house and loaded up their car. You know, it's just things happen. Hello, somebody. You know, so to fight brings significance. What does significance mean? Importance. Important. I want to work with people no matter what, if they don't like me or not. Hello, somebody. I want to work with people, and I'll love them as best as I can. But if I don't like myself, how am I going to work with people? I like myself a little bit. Hello, somebody. I know I got to lose a couple pounds, but I'm all right. You know what I'm saying? I went to talk to a brother today down the street, went driving around, and he used to take care of me when I first got home from the hospital. He came live with me for six months. I went and seen him today. And he used to shave, shave me, do everything for me. Not that personal stuff, but, you know, help me out around the house. My wife took care of that. But, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is, man, you know, you know, we need to work with people. Hello, if we're going to go further. I know I'm going. And then the next, uh, uh, I want to bring out another story. But also presenters also have to teach those that if you're working, how many are working with people here? You got to teach the person that is under you, you're working with wisdom. Let me give you a, a little thing right here. We might not have the strength and vigor of these young people, but we have experience, some of us. Some of you have life experience. What is wisdom? It's the application of knowledge. One day there was a tree chopping contest between a young man and a wise man, an older wise man. They looked at each other and they began to chop down trees. So they began and the young man chopped all day without stopping. The older man stopped every hour for a break. At the end of the day, the older man had twice as much trees chopped down as the younger man. The younger man asked how did it, you do that? You stopped every hour, and I never stopped. And he said, every hour I stopped because I took time to sharpen my axe. 
You hearing me? Lastly, the fourth person, the spot that is open, are those that are being presented to God. Those like Andrew in South Africa, the two Panama, Joe D going, Joe B going to Boston. Those who are being presented. The Bible calls his name Chimham. His name means, I talked about this before, pale face. It means that the sun hadn't hit him yet. In other words, they didn't know who he was. He was underneath the surface. Men present people based on what's on the surface, but God presents people based on what's underneath the surface. See, greatness is being built in someone's life underneath the surface. When you clean the church, greatness is being built. When you go to worship practice, greatness is being built. When you clean the, watch the cars in the parking lot, greatness is being built. When you shake hands and greet at the front door, greatness is being built. When you make it to the prayer meeting on Sunday at 6 o'clock, Greatness is being built. When you're at the streets, greatness is being built. When the bucket passes by, greatness is being built. At the victory groups on Friday, Thursday, Saturday, greatness is being built. When you go to the third wave service on Friday night, greatness is being built. In the cheer groups, greatness is being built. In the children's ministry, greatness is being built. When you're driving to and from church 10 times in one day, greatness is being built. At the meetings before and after, greatness is being built. They don't know about you yet, but greatness is being built. Give the Lord a hand clap. Leo, come back here, Leo. Come back here real quick. And I'm going to end with this. Hallelujah. Everybody all right? Stand right here, Leo, in the front right here. Amen. You represent God. Look at them go right there in the middle, a little bit up. And go up about three feet. One, two, three. Okay, right there. Robert, come stand behind him. You're a protector. Stand right behind him. You're a protector. Robert's a protector. Amen. Uh, Leonard, you're a disciple. You stand, you stand right there. You're a presenter. All right. Uh, we need a provider. Where's, where's big aunt at? The other Anthony, the usher. Yoku's husband. Come on, aunt. Come here, aunt. He's a provider. Amen. Where's, where's, uh, look towards uh, Leo. Turn around. You're looking the wrong way. <laughs> I love you. Amen. And then there, where's uh, 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 Rose's son? What's his name? Aaron. Aaron. Where's Aaron at? Is he here? Come on, Aaron. Stand right here. Turn right in front of him. This is a protector, a provider, a person that's being presented, and a presenter right here. And this is what's going to further the church, these four. But these four spots are open for all of you. I want four more people to come. Come on, Clemmy. Amen. Uh, come on, uh, Sister and Aunt Sonia, right? Amen. Johnny, come on up here, man. You're going to mind somebody, amen. <laughs> he says that all the time. <laughs> no, you can stay right here. He want to go to the front of the line. <laughs> all right. Uh, let me have another one. Um, anybody? Come on, come on up, brother. He look, this guy looks like a wrestler, amen? Don't beat me up, bro. All right. Okay, you be a protector. Take Robert's spot. Okay, Rob, you can go. Okay, uh, Clemmy, take Anthony's spot. Anthony, you can go. Okay, Sister Sony, take Leonard's spot. Johnny, go ahead and take Andrew's spot. Amen. Aaron, Aaron, I'm sorry. Amen. <laughs> These spots are interchangeable with everybody. 
Everybody here. It's an interchangeable spot. We're, it's not, we're not an exclusive church. We're an inclusive church. Inclusive. In other words, you can get there. And when we get there and we're like that, put your arms up. Everybody, get a little closer. Put your arms straight. Right there. That's horizontal leadership, which takes the greatness of this church to another level. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the worship team to come. Miguel, I wanted to tell you that you, you got all four in you, bro. All four. Come here, Miguel. I want you to say, you know what? I see you going to Boston this summer. I don't know why. I see you on that team. They don't know about L.A. yet, but they're going to bring you. But, it, but when you come back, that's going to be the big thing. When you come back, you're going to bring something back with you that's going to bring change. And I see that. Lord, we pray for Miguel. We thank you for him. I pray, God, in Jesus' name that you use him in a mighty way. You have something in you, Miguel. There's something there. And it's no more time to hold back. Bring it out now. Bring it out now. Go after what you're going to go after as soon as possible. Go after it because it's there. It's festering inside of you. You don't even know how to hold it down. You're here. You drive all the way from South Central to be here because you want to get more of it. You know what I mean? You want to get more of it. But God, God now it's time to you, for you to give it to somebody else. To get out there and work in the ministry. Get out there in the field, man. Grab that bullhorn. Get the mic. Do what you got to lead team to get crazy for Jesus. Lord, we pray, God, for his children, God, and his situation. We pray for him, oh, God. Heal his heart that he won't have all those issues. Lord, we thank you for him. Oh, God, we thank you that he's here. We give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. In Jesus' name. Come on, Aunt, where's Aunt at? Or... Robert, lay hands on him real quick. Thank you, Lord. Miguel, everything's going to, God is healing your heart, bro. That is healing your soul because that's what's happening. You, you're broken. They don't know, man. You are a treasure, bro. You're a treasure. Powerful things you're going to do. Amen. Things happen, but it's gone now. Shake it off. Move forward, bro. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Oh, you got all four spots in you, bro. You're interchangeable. You're apodectrious. God brought you to the cave of Adullam right here. bro. And God, we thank you for him. We ask you to bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Brother. I want to talk to the sister in the red. Come here. Come here, sis. Yeah, we, we need you to ignite what is happening inside of you and to other people. I see something happening inside of you. I see that God has broke depression. God has broke things that were holding you down. Whatever it was, alcoholism, you know what I mean, not trusting people, living in fear. It is broken in the name of Jesus. Be yourself. God has given you an identity. Be yourself. Be yourself and touch other people. Amen. Don't worry about what people think. Don't worry about what people say. You be yourself. And God is going to elevate you and do things in your life, to do things in your children, do things in your marriage. Powerful things are going to happen within your life. Powerful things are going to happen in your life. You're going to make people smile when they see you. They're going to smile. Hey, there she goes. Amen. You're going to make people smile. And we ask your anointing upon her life, oh Lord. By the blood of Jesus, my God, heal her body. God, touch her husband. God, touch her children. Touch her finances. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Come on up here, beard. Uh, my man, wrestler. Come on up here. What's your name, bro? Adrian, come on up here, Adrian, brother Adrian. I didn't know who he was. I seen you. I said, man, he must be uh, one of them WWF dudes or something. <laughs> no, man, but that beard is cool, bro. Yeah, that beard is cool. Can I get one? I'll put it right here. Yeah. 
I see God doing something in your life. I, the other day I was standing right there. You were weeping before the presence of God. God touched you. And there's a reason why God is touching you. Because there's other things that God wants you to do. I see you being here, serving God, backing up, being a, being a protector in the house of God. You're going to get to the protector spot, not because of your physique, because of your spirit. God is going to grow you in the inside where your spirit is going to grow to be strong. To be strong. You're not going to use drugs no more. You're not going to smoke no more. You're not going to live in, in a certain way, but you're going to get right with God. And you're not going to have to go through the men's zone. You're going to be a church product. God, in the name of Jesus. But you got to teach yourself. You got to be a self learner. You got to teach yourself. You got to get into the Word and you got to get into prayer. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. What you do is you ask one of the leaders, "What do I got to do?" Well, first, if you're living with a girl, you got to get married, bro. You know. I don't. You know. I mean, you got to make it right because you don't want to grow in God and then leak it out. You want to hold on to it. Don't leak it out. Because then you might get hurt and don't want to come back. We got to guard your heart. You're a protector. Guard your heart. All right? So make it right with God. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Everybody tripping off, off me a little bit. Amen. Praise the Lord. I can't see everybody. Come here, Moses. Moses, man, he's a great man of God. Come here, Moses. Bring, bring your wife with you. She can come with you. Eloy, Eloy, come on up with them. But the, these people are part of our church now, man. They're they're great. They're great people. Who's that? Your daughter? Oh yeah, your oldest or what? Okay, bring her. Bring her here with you. I, is she new? Is this her first time? Okay. All right. I thought you was cheating on me for a minute, bro. I said, you ain't you married to somebody else? That's your dad. He's a cool dude, man. Praise the Lord. I thought I was the only one that wore skinny jeans, huh? You can't buy, you can't buy baggy jeans no more, can you? Amen. But I like you guys. Lord, I pray for Eloy, Pastor Moses, his sister Yadia, and uh, his, his daughter, uh, Eloy's daughter. And I pray, God, you would settle in their heart that they made the right decision, that they wouldn't question it no more, that they would just lock in, lock and load, my God, and serve right here. Oh, God, tell them to stop looking. Oh, God, it's here. Greatness is here. Hallelujah, God, we thank you for them. And we pray, God, that they would connect with people and they would use their giftings. Moses, you got a gift to interpret the word of God. Amen. But God gave you that gift. It's not from you. God gave it to you. You honor him with it. Amen. But God, I pray, God, that you would bless him. My God, you would use him in a powerful way to bring the word of God, to interpret it, to bring it out, to, to bring it out, my God, the best way that he knows how. And we thank you for that. We pray for his wife, God, to come right behind him. And for Eloy and his family and their children to find their place within this church. Oh God, not not this is their church now. And they would start presenting people. They would get to their spots. Oh God, whatever it may take. Somebody, something is in a way trying to block them, but I plead the blood of Jesus right now. God, that they would get to their spot. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Vertical, horizontal leadership would come into their life. And they would do great things for God's honor and glory. Amen. Give the Lord a praise clap tonight for them. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's some, come here, Mark and Cindy. Mark and Cindy. Come here, Mark and Cindy. I didn't even know you guys were here. But I know you guys used to go to this church before. They used to go, the, 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 the church started at our house in a Bible study and they used to come. And you, thank you for being nice to my wife all the time. I used to think that I wasn't, you know, I mean, I used, to, I used to look at me. He had a job and all that and doing all the things. And I used to look at me. I'm, I'm on SSI. I ain't got no money, man. 
I want to be like Mark. Amen. But you know what? God brought you here. And there's a way that God's going to get you. Right now, you, you were in exile. You were in exile, not being in the place where you wanted to be. You were in exile, but now you're in the place where you want to be. And God has a spot for you. God has a spot for her. It might not be the easiest way to get there right now, but God, that place is held for you. There, nobody can take the, the gifts and the calling of God without repentance. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over Mark and Cindy. I thank you for them. God, they want to serve you in and, and the, and the way that they feel in their hearts they want to do it I pray God that they would be accepted that they wouldn't feel that people are looking at them out, out the side of their eyes that people are talking about them I rebuke that in the name of Jesus they would know that you love them and that you brought them here oh God to be part of this church to get back in where they fit in in the name of Jesus and we thank you for them Lord and God we pray God in Jesus name that you would use them to build relationships here. God, put a smile on their face that's real. They don't have to fake it. They got a real smile, Lord. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a praise clap. Praise the Lord. It's good to have Mark and Cindy here with us. I can't see past the fifth row, man. Pray for me. Praise the Lord. Leo, come here, Leo. I know I was talking to you, but I was, you know what I mean? Praise the Lord. I want, I want you to know that this church, man, is, is your home, bro. This is it. But, but you have a lot of giftings with people. You have a lot of giftings, man. Don't, don't be uh, embarrassed. Don't be complex, man. Men and women are going to come to you. Men and women, children, all that. They all like you. They all like you, man. You know what I mean? And God has kept you all these years. But now is the time. Right here. Things are not going to line up the way we want them to be, man. I, I wish everything was better for me. But, I, you know, I'm not looking at it. I'm looking at what I got to do. And you need to look at what you got to do. And then what you got to do is just be, be Leo. That's it. But be Leo all the time. Consistent. You know what I mean? Talk to people. Hug people. Hold people. Just by doing that, you're keeping people here, and you're furthering greatness. Amen? Furthering. Furthering. You know what I mean? Stretch your hands out this way. God, I, I pray for Leo that he would not feel insignificant, but he would know the, the significance and the importance of him being here. Oh, God, and we come against the enemy. We're lying to his soul, lying to his emotions. Whatever happened to his life back in the day, we pray healing upon him, Lord. Healing in a special way. You are God's child. You are God's son. And God loves you, Leo. God loves you. And you're a powerful, powerful man of God. And we thank you for Leo. We thank you for Leo. Come on, somebody come up here and give Leo a hug. Give him a hug, man. Hey, sister. Come on up here. Leo's saying I'm embarrassing him. We love you, Leo. Give Leo a hand clap. We thank you, Leo. Thank you. Speak life to Leo when you see him. Speak life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sandra, come on up here. Prayer, prayer. I always call it prayer Sandra because the other one's Usher Sandra. Because there's two of them. Amen. There's two of them. You've been around a long time, girl, right? How long you been around? Yeah, 23. I've been in Victory Alley 37 years. 37? Well, that's a long time. I was like, I'm, I'm old, man. I must be old. No, 37 years. But it's a great thing. I want you to lift your hands. Pray healing upon her hands, God, that when she lays hands on the sick, that they would recover. In Jesus' name. When people come to her, my God, and they confess their, their things from the past, I pray, my God, in Jesus' name, God, that healing will take place. Use her, my God, in Jesus' name, in a powerful way to bring healing upon emotions, upon nerves, upon 
physical healings, upon mental healings, in all different ways. God, I pray, God, that she would be bold enough to lay hands and believe you for miracles. Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, you put her in position. You put her in her spot, my God. Let her stay there and remain. Remain. You got her in the spot, Lord. Let her use it for your honor and glory. There's anointing upon that spot that God put you at. Tap into it. Tap into it. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a praise clap. Praise the Lord. Sister Maritza, stand right here, please. I see you serving God all over the church, man. You got a servant's heart. You're an example to all of us. I know you think about your family all the time, but God has your family in his hands. And he wants you to know that he's going to work it out with whoever it may be here. And he's going to bless your life. Hallelujah. By you being here, it has taken this church to another level. We thank you for being who you are. And we love you, and you are loved by many that is here. Don't think that every time that you're serving God that people are not wanting to serve and, and don't respect what you do. We respect you. are respected. You know what I mean? You are respected. You know, know that when you go to bed tonight that people respect you. We thank you for being you. Hallelujah. We hope that others would be recreated by you. Pour out what you have inside of you and somebody else. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for Miss Maritza. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I mean, uh, I'm trying to do what I can, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm 61 years old. I'll be 62 pretty quick, you know what I mean? I've been through a lot of stuff, a lot of battles. But I'm still standing here. Been through a lot of battles. I'm still fighting battles today. I don't know if you can see. I got a sword stuck in my back right now. You know what I mean? But I'm living like this. But you know what? What is happening here is powerful. I'm going for the ride. You know what I mean? Whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. Yeah, because I want to see what God's going to do. But you know what? Let's do this. This place, this, we won't be here that long. It's just a stepping stone. <laughs> But, but, you know, in five years, you're going to look back and say, what? You know what I mean? How did it happen, man? Document history is happening right now. This church is bigger than probably about 50% to 75% of regional churches. You know what? You know what's going to happen? This church is going to be a regional church very quick within the next couple of years. And the four positions that I showed you, these four spots, that's what Pastor Sonny's doing. He got the bases. And he's building dependence and trust with his bases. And they're running things. They're, they're making them, this ministry take off. We're going to another level. Guadalajara is booming. Panama is booming. You know what I mean? Why can't West Covina boom? Base. There's a base. But well, we got to build together horizontal leadership. Pastor Ezra can't do it alone. The reason he's going to do it is because he's got good people around him. Good people that he could trust. His dependence is on God, remember? But he can depend on others like Anthony and Robert and you. And you, Anthony. And, and you, uh, what's your name there? Adrian, the wrestler. <laughs> When the devil comes in here, I want you to grab him and throw him on the floor. And <laughs> but, but we got to get to our spots. You know, we got to get to our spot. You know what I mean? You got to learn. You got to learn. How do, how do I be like Robert? He's a protector. He protects. He doesn't make big issues out of small things. He keeps going. People talk about him, talk about him, stab him in the back all the time, but he keeps going forward. It's how you react to things, defense. How do you react, right? How do you react? Some of us got to disciple people. How are they going to get what, what God got if we don't pour what we got into them? And some of you, they don't even know you yet, man, but you're coming. You're a chimham. You're representing this church. You know, the sun hasn't hit you yet. 
But God, amen, the sun is going to shine pretty soon upon your life. You're not going to be pale face anymore. Praise the Lord. You're going to be known. You're going to be known. Amen. Thank you for uh, listening to me tonight. God bless you. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I hope this message blessed you and ministered into your heart. I also want to let you know that it's never too late for you to give. If you look at the links below, there you can see different ways for you to give unto the Lord. Also, if you have not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do so right now, where there you can see previous messages and future services. Other than that, get connected and stay connected. We'll see you real soon. God bless.